Get away, get away, I tell you. I want none of your singing here. Now get away, before I take a stick to you. Get away, all of you. It was I who said those words, may heaven help my soul. It was I who called them out into the London night on Christmas Eve and sent those children scampering into the fog with fear in their hearts, where but a moment before had been the love of fellow man and God. I have learnt a great deal since then, and my story bears telling. My name is Ebenezer Scrooge, and the time of which I speak was Christmas, in the year of our Lord, 1843. It was cold, bleak, biting weather. In my counting house, where I sat working busily over my ledgers, the fog came pouring in at every chink and keyhole. But I remember noting with silent glee that it had been a good year, and I was a much richer man. The city clocks had just struck three, but already it was quite dark, and I had lit a candle to see by. My clerk had also lit a candle. The miserable wretch was warming his hands by it, wasting good time and money. I was just about to reprimand him when the door opened with a clatter. Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Close that door. Do you want to freeze us out? I'm sorry, Uncle. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And what reason have you to be merry? Heaven knows you're poor enough. Then what right of you to be sour? You're rich enough. <laughs> this is the place of business, nephew. I'll thank you to leave us alone. Now, now, don't be angry, Uncle. What else can I be when I live in such a world of fools? Merry Christmas. Humbug! What does it mean but a time for paying bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older, but not an hour richer? If I had my way, every fool who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Now, get out! Uncle Ebenezer, if you'll only... Keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. But that's just it. You don't keep it. I came to ask you to have dinner with us tomorrow. Thank you, nephew. I'll starve first. But why? We don't want anything from you. We ask nothing of you. Really? Not even a gift for your charming wife? A bauble for your pretty little child? Oh, come. I'm sorry you don't understand, Uncle. I came here purely out of the Christmas spirit. And when you go, will you please take it with you? Good night, nephew. <laughs> Good night, sir. Merry Christmas! Humbug! Mr. Scrooge, sir. Well, Cratchit, why aren't you working at your desk? If you please, sir, there's a gentleman to see you about a charity. Charity? It's time for closing. That's what I told him, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe... Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. He died seven years ago this very night. On Christmas Eve? Oh, a pity. But we have no doubt his liberality is well represented by his surviving partner. <laughs> Mr. Marley's liberality was matched only by my own. Ah, as you know, Mr. Scrooge, at this festive season of the year, we attempt to make some slight provision for the poor and the destitute. Many thousands are in want of the common necessities of life, and many thousands are in want of common comfort, sir. Oh, dear, dear, are there no prisons? Why, why, yes, sir, plenty of prisons. And the union workhouses, aren't they still in operation? Yes, they are, sir. Oh, but... I was afraid from what you said that they weren't. I'm very glad to hear it. Oh, <laughs> uh, now, uh... Uh, what shall I put you down for, sir? For nothing. You wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. I can't afford to make idle people merry. As a citizen, I help to support the workhouses. Those who are badly off must go there. Many can't go there. Many would rather die. Then they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Mr. Scrooge, sir. Well, what is it? I was just wondering, sir, if... If you might leave for the night, eh? Well, say it. Yes, sir. And you'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose, Mr. Cratchit. If it's quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient and hardly reasonable. If I was to deduct half a crown for it, you'd think yourself ill-used, wouldn't you, Mr. Cratchit? Well, sir, 
half a crown. And yet, Mr. Cratchit, you see no reason why I shouldn't pay a day's wages for no work. It's only once a year, sir. Once a year. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Well, I suppose you must have it. Lock all the windows when you leave. And mind you, be here all the earlier next morning. I felt no twinge of conscience that fateful Christmas Eve, no pang of remorse, no sense of guilt, for I had never known these weakling sentiments. Why then did my dark chambers seem darker than they ever had before? Why did I start in fear as I crossed the gloomy threshold of my house? What was there waiting for me? I stood in the blackness, suddenly shaken by a chill, as though an icy hand had clasped its fingers round my heart. Then slowly I mounted the stairs. Once in my room, I knew I would be safe. Once locked behind my heavy door, this nameless fear that clutched at me would be gone. Quickly, I made myself ready for bed. And then, in the flickering light of my solitary candle, I saw it. It stood in the shadows, shining with a sickly bluish gleam. Its eyes were staring into mine, two dead eyes, staring out of a dead face. Who are you? What do you want with me? Who are you? Ask me rather who I was. In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Marley. I know you now. But you are dead. You're dead. Why have you come here? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and wide. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. No, no, stand back. His spirit is doomed to wander through the world and witness happiness it cannot share, but might have shared on earth. You, you are fettered. You're in chains. Tell me why. I wear the chain I forged in life. Of my own free will I wore it. I made it link by link and yard by yard. Is its pattern strange to you? Money boxes, keys and padlocks, heavy purses wrought in steel. I think you know this pattern well. You were, you were always a good man of business, Marley. Business. Mankind was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance were my business. But I turned my back on these and looked for wealth. I suffer for it now. But you are seven years dead. You are beyond suffering. Hear me. My time is nearly gone. As I have suffered, so will you. For your life is mean. Your soul is shriveled as mine was. But while that life still beats in you, you have yet one chance, one hope of escaping my fate. What hope is that you speak of? Tell me, Marley. You will be haunted by three spirits. Look for the first in the dark of the morning when the clock strikes one, the second spirit on the stroke of two. The third will come when the bell tolls three. Look to see me no more, but remember well what I have said. Remember and take heed. Remember. How long I slept, I do not know. But I awoke in a tremble, the voice of the steeple clock still ringing in my ears as it struck the first hour of Christmas Day. There at my bedside... As old Marley had warned, was the spirit who had come to haunt me. It was a strange figure, like a child, and yet its hair was white with age. It held a branch of fresh green holly in its hand, and strangest of all, from the crown of its head there sprung a bright, clear light. You must come with me, Ebenezer Scrooge. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Well, why have you come? 
What brings you here? Your welfare and your reclamation. Rise and walk with me. Walk? Where? Through your window. Out into the night. Out on the wings of the wind. Come with me, Ebenezer Scrooge. Wait, wait. What place is this? Where are we? Look there below and tell me what you see. I see... I see a school, a cold and drafty hall. I see a long, bare, melancholy room in which a boy sits reading. A solitary child, neglected by his friends, for they have all gone home for Christmas. He, he wants to cry, but doesn't dare. Now he lifts his head. I see his face. It... His name... His name is Ebenezer Scrooge. Here now is the shadow of another Christmas. The boy is older, but the innocence of childhood is no longer in his face. There is a restless motion in his eye, and he wears the signs of care and greed. Show me no more. That girl sits beside him there to be married. Stop. Take me back. Listen, Ebenezer Scrooge. Hear what she says. I know it matters little to you. And so, I give you your release, no, Ebony. Take me back. You have changed. And your love is not for me any longer. You love money now. And power. Another idol has displaced me. A golden one. Goodbye, Ebony. She is gone. Out of the room, out of your life. Show me no more, I say. One no. shadow more. No, no more. One glimpse of her at still another Christmas. No. Happy in a home that might have been your home. No. Laughing with her children who might have been no. your children. No, no, leave me. Haunt me no longer, do you hear? Haunt me no longer. Again I slept. Again, the steeple clock told out the hour on the Christmas morning air. Wake up, man, wake up. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me, man. Know me better. Before me stood a spirit, giant in size, clear-eyed and smiling. On its head there was a crown of holly. It held a great lighted torch high in the air filling the room with a ruddy glow. I stared at him, more in wonder than in fear. And then the second spirit laughed. (laughs) Have you never seen the like of me before? Never. What? You've never walked with my brothers? Have you many brothers, spirit? More than 1,800. One for every Christmas since the first. Will you come with me, man? I've seen the Christmases of the past. They brought me no joy. Oh, come along, man, come along. I will show you the Christmas of today. There lies the world below you. Look, Ebenezer Scrooge, and tell me what you see. I see the brightness of a million fires burning on a million hearths. I see families joined together. Making merry. Over nothing. I see children with their bright new toys. Laughing. And invalids on their sick beds. Smiling with new hope. I see a place where miners live who labor in the bowels of the earth. And even they are happy on this night. Yes, yes, they appear so. And there at sea, look, a ship tossed by the wind. And on the ship, two sailors join hands. To wish each other joy. Yes, yes, all this I see. And all this is the spirit of Christmas. Come with me now. There is a miserable room in a miserable house where lives a man that you know well. There. Do you see him? Hi, that's my clerk, Bob Cratchit. But the others, oh, I know them not. Bob Cratchit has a wife and children. Five children. And all these mouths are fed and bodies clothed on the 15 shillings which you so kindly give him every week. A wife and children? I never knew that... You might have known. You never asked. That child, the youngest of the five, he... He has a crutch. 
He is a cripple? The crutch supports his body. His spirit stands alone. <laughs> well, now, children, your father's here. Chairs to the table. Peter, fetch the goose. Martha, the potatoes need your hands. Oh, Bob, they're such a goose. <laughs> Tiny Tim could tell you that, couldn't you, Tim? I smelled it, Mother. I could smell it coming up the stairs. Oh, my little one. And what's your good boy at church, Bob? As good as gold, eh, Tiny Tim? It was nice to be in church this morning, Mother. I wanted everyone to see me. Why, Tiny Tim? Because I'm a cripple. And if people see a cripple on Christmas Day, why, then they'll remember that this is God's day. And it's God who makes the cripples walk and the blind to see. Tiny Tim. Well, isn't it, Mother? Yes, dear. Isn't it, Father? Who else, my son? And he'll make me walk, too. Someday I'll just throw away my crutch and I'll never have to use it again. Will I, Father? Never. Why, 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 you're growing stronger every day. Feel his arm, Mother. Just feel it. Feel my arm, Mother. A poor feast, a goose no larger than your hand might cover. But the Cratchits are not hard to please. There never was such a goose. I don't believe there ever was such a goose cooked. The tenderness, the flavor. And the stuffing. And now the pudding. A very small pudding for so large a family. A wonderful pudding, wonderful. Children, I regard this pudding, I regard it, I say, as the greatest success achieved by Mrs. Cratchit since our marriage. Hooray! And now a toast. A Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. Merry, Merry Christmas, my dears. God bless us, everyone. is over. The Cratchits all gather round the fire now, and Tiny Tim will sing to them. Just one short tune before he's off to bed. Tiny Tim, he's so pale, so thin. Tell me, will he live? Spirit, will Tiny Tim live? I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner, and a crutch without an owner. If these shadows remain unaltered, the child will die. No, no, say, he will be spared. Tell me, he will be spared. Do you worry? Why? If he be like to die, why then he had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Spirit, stop. Don't go. There must be others in the world, poor and in want. Are there no prisons? Hear me. They can be helped. Are there no prisons? Spirit. Are there no workhouses? Spirit, say, come back. Come back. The spirit had gone. I was alone in the windswept street, my shoulders bowed with shame. From far off, I heard the hours strike. And looking up, I beheld the third of the spirit. It was a phantom, shrouded in a long black robe. A hood concealed its face, but from the folds of the robe a thin white hand was outstretched toward me, beckoning. I am the ghost of Christmas yet to come. I will show you the shadows of things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any specter I have seen. Come. Look there. Do you know this street, Ebenezer Scrooge? I do. My business is here, but that building is strange to me. It will be built in years to come. Do you know those two men walking there? I know them well. They are my friends. Hear what they say. Well, old Scratch has got his own a blast, eh? Well, so I hear. When did he die? Last night, I believe. What was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. <laughs> <laughs> What's he done with his money? Oh, I don't know. Left it to his business, probably. Well, I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't give it away. <laughs> <laughs> Cold, isn't it? Did you hear, Ebenezer Scrooge? What man is that who died? They did not say his name. Come. Tell me. 
Tell me now what you see. A room. A dark and gloomy chamber. On the bed, a figure lies covered with a shroud. Someone is dead in this room. Remove the shroud and look upon his face. I am afraid. Remove the shroud. It is my own face that I see. My own. You are dead, Ebenezer Scrooge. But why am I alone? Why is there no one here? There are none to mourn you. Not one voice lifted in prayer. Not one tear shed. Alone in the dark forever. Alone. No, there must be someone. I have friends. Those men we heard upon the street, they were your friends. Come. Where do you take me now? A graveyard. Have I not seen enough of death? You looked in vain for mourners at your bed. Now see the face of one lost in grief. Figure by a gravestone, kneeling in the fresh turned earth. Why, it's Bob Cratchit! It's Bob Cratchit kneeling there, but why? Why? Death has passed his humble house and laid a wreath upon his step. But the grave, it's such a small grave, is it? Did Tiny Tim die? Hear the father mourning for the son. I wish that you could see this place, Tiny Tim. There's grass here such as you've never seen before. And flowers too, and birds. You'll like it here, Tiny Tim. There'll be no pain, and you can throw your crutch away at last. And you won't be alone either, for I'll come here every Sunday as I promised. And as I walk home, I'll feel your tiny weight upon my shoulder the way we used to walk, eh, Tim? And I'll hear your laugh, and I'll see your smile, and I'll think to myself, I'll think, why, he's here just as he always was. He's here, tiny Tim. Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim. Born 1838. Departed this life, age seven years. Must this be? Must that father cry out his heart upon a gravestone? Tell me this must not be. There was a man named Ebenezer Scrooge. He might have saved this child. He will. He will. Let me have one chance. It was promised me if I altered my life. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The Spirit of God shall strive in me, I swear. Only tell me, tell me that I may sponge away the writing on that gravestone. Tell me. <laughs> Suddenly I was back in my room, and the sun was streaming through the window. I had a sudden fear that Christmas Day had passed. With a cry, I sprang from my bed and threw open the window. You there, boy, what day is this? Eh? What day? Today? Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. Hello there, my fine fellow. Hello. Do you know the poulterers at the corner? I should hope I did. Oh, 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 an intelligent boy. Have they sold the prize turkey that was hanging there? What? The turkey is big as me? Ha, <laughs> ha, delightful boy. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Is it still there? It's hanging there now. Then go and buy it, boy. Yahoo. No, I'm in earnest. Here, here's the money. Go and buy it. Tell him to send it to Bob Cratchit's house. And whatever's left is for you. And hurry, boy, hurry. I've been invited to my nephew's for dinner. I'm and boy, yes, sir. Merry Christmas, boy. Merry Christmas. And a Merry Christmas it was. I had the pleasure that day of dining with my nephew and his family. A rare treat I discovered. And I was fortunate enough to meet the gentleman who had asked me for a contribution. Oh, he was surprised when old Scrooge pressed the money on him. And Cratchit? I had the double pleasure of raising his salary to such a figure that his eyes bulged almost from their sockets. A rare day, a rare treat all around. Yes, that was a Christmas for you. And I may tell you that Tiny Tim did not die. He's well and growing stronger day by day. A fine boy. I'll see him tonight at dinner, for this is Christmas once again. Yes, I keep Christmas now, for I have learned this. 
that no greater glory is given us than the love of fellow man, for in that love is love of God. May we keep Christmas always. May its fires burn forever in our hearts. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. <laughs>